Good morning, Green Phonics Group, and welcome to another new week of home learning. Hopefully you're all rested after a lovely weekend and raring to go. Okay, so today's phonics sound is our last digraph phonics sound in the phase three phonics system. And I think it's quite an easy one. Take a look and see what you think. Okay, so I'm betting that you're shouting at the screen at me. This is the E sound. So when we put two letter E's together, they make the E sound. Let's have a look at the words that we've got on screen today for you to read. So as per usual, there's four words here. Pop the sound buttons underneath them, say them really quickly, and you will hear the word. Pause me while you're doing that, come back to me when you're ready to check. Okay, are we ready? So let's have a look. So we can see here, we've got some single sounds and a digraph in the middle of this word. So we've got m, eat, meet. The word is meet. So that's to meet your friend in the park or something like that. Have a look at the next one. So we've got single, digraph, single, d, eep, deep. Let's try the next one. So two single sounds at the front here, digraph and another single sound. So we've got green, green, green. Notice again how I blended those two single sounds together so that I can make it make more sense when I put it with the rest of the word. So let's try this one, two single sounds again. Digraph, single sound. And again, I'm gonna put these two together really quickly to help me hear the word. So rather than going s, w, eep, I'm gonna go sw, 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 eep. And that helps me hear sweep. So that's a little tip for you when the words get longer. If you find there are several letters together, quite often they're consonants, which means the letters that aren't our vowels in our alphabet, our A-E-I-O-U, then it can help if we blend those together and then join them onto the rest of the word. Okay, so if you're finding it tricky, try that. Okay, so at the bottom of the screen, I've got my usual words for you to try and spell. So grab yourself a piece of paper and we'll begin. I'll say a word, pause me, write it down, come back. Okay, so the first word is heel. Try heel for me. Okay, so let's take a look. Here we go, is heel. <gasps> eel. Well done. Okay, the next one is tweet. Tweet. Okay, let's take a look at tweet. So we've got t eat, tweet. Okay, then we have cheek. Let's take a look at cheek. Here we go. So we've got the ch sound, so cheek. And hopefully you've got that kicking at the end because we know that's the K that normally goes at the end of words. The next one is creep. Okay, let's look at creep. So, creep, creep. Now, you'll notice we have an extra word on the screen today, and above it is a rather strange looking alien. That's because this is an alien word. It's not a real word. This is the name of the alien on screen. So have a think about that when I say the word. It's the name of the alien on screen. So the alien's name, is feed, feed. Have a go at that one. Okay, so let's take a look at feed. So we've got our f sound, our e sound d at the end, so feed. And do you notice we have a capital T? Did you write a capital T? Remember I said to you it was the name of the alien and we talked about nouns when they're proper nouns, they're the name of something, they always have a capital letter. Did I trick you or did you hear and recognise what I was doing? I hope you did. Okay, let's take a look at today's task. Right, so today's task is for you to tell me a story. Now, I've put some pictures on the screen because this is going to be the basis of your story and I'd like you to finish the story off for me. So if we have a look at what we've got, 
we have got an owl. So your main character in today's story is an owl. And this is an owl who always wears a flower crown. Okay, now this owl loves to sing. She sings all day and all night. Unfortunately, she hasn't got a very good voice and she makes a terrible screeching sound whenever she sings. Now, this annoys all the animals in the area that she lives. They get very angry and they tell her, no more, you have to leave. We don't want you singing here anymore. So the poor owl has to go off and leave and try and find somewhere else to live. On her journey, she finds a jar of sweets. Now, it's up to you how the story ends. What does she do? How does she solve her problem? Does she find somewhere new to live? Does she go back and solve the problem with the other animals? How are you going to solve her problem of not having anywhere to live? Now, when you write the story, I'd like you to consider a few things. So I want, first of all, a good opening phrase in my story. I don't really want once upon a time. I want something exciting, maybe something that might even start describing the setting or telling me the time of day or the time of year that the story is taking place. So not once upon a time. How about um, in the in the dreary forest or on a bright summer's day, give me something to start my story and make it a little bit more interesting. I'd also like a setting description. Where is the owl? I assume the owl isn't in the North Pole. Where is the owl? What's the owl's home like? Then obviously you need to tell me what's happening. That's when you tell me that our owl likes to wear her flower crown all the time. She loves to sing. And then you can start building into how she has quite a bad voice and I would like the word screech in your story because that's our E sound for today so I need that screech word in your story. Obviously then we need the problem to occur which is that the rest of the animals in the forest or wherever she lives hate the singing and tell her she's got to leave, she can't stay anymore because they can't sleep, they can't do anything and they're very annoyed. So then carry on with your story, where does she go? What does she do? And what does she discover? Well, we know what she's going to discover. She's going to discover, and again, I want this one written, a jar of sweets. So I want that sweet sound. I want the E sound in sweets, okay? So she must discover her jar of sweets when she goes looking for somewhere new to live. And then you have to decide how her problem is solved. Does she find a new place to live? Does she meet new animals who love her singing? Does she go back? and maybe share her sweets with the other animals and they, that makes them happy. How, does, how do we do it? Do the sweets make her voice change and make it not screech when she sings? It's up to you. You decide how to solve the problem. Now, while you're writing the story, I want you to think about those great adjectives to describe both the owl and the jar of sweets. So remember, our adjective describes the noun. So we need to say what the owl maybe looks like. Maybe we could say how she was feeling. So we need to say all those things to describe. So I might look at the owl and I might say that the owl um, was a happy, fluffy owl. So cheerful, fluffy owl, um, jolly, fluffy owl. She could be any of those things, couldn't she? The jar of sweets, the sweets, they could be tasty. They could be juicy. Um, they could be bitter. They could be sour. So we could have a jar of... Um, juicy tempting sweets. Any word like that to help describe and make the story more interesting. So it's up to you how you finish your story off, how you solve your problem, but I do need the word screech, I do need jar of sweets in your story, and I want you to start with a brilliant opener and some great adjectives. Have a go, see what you can come up with. Bye for now.